In the previous video, we have created the way to find a start and end markers on our root prefab uh, of type dead end. And I have played around with the setup for our car. So if we set the torque to 0.02 and press play, now we should be able to create a four way where there was an issue, house, a special structure, and now the that is spawned should stick to its own lane. So it should stick to the lane much better. And you can see it works great. So now what we can do is add start and end positions to the remaining road prefabs. So I think we should start from the street street prefab, but to add the uh, positions to it, we will need to create a child uh, class of the road helper so that we can provide to it a bit of the different logic. Let's go to the scripts, AI. Here we have our road helper. So let's right click, create, and let's create a C sharp script. Let's call it road helper straight. And let's open this script up in Visual Studio. Great. Let's delete the update and start methods. And to extend our road helper script, instead of mono behavior, we are going to type road helper. And since this is in a different namespace, I'm going to alt enter on it. And you can see we are using simple city.ai. I have placed our root helper in this namespace. So we need to be using the simple city.ai namespace to import it to our road helper straight. Or otherwise, around we could add to it to our namespace by typing namespace and place it in our simple city.ai. And now if we open parentheses and place our class inside this namespace, then we will not need to be using the simple AI namespace to import our road helper. It will already know where to find it. In any case, now we will need to provide for it a bit of a different functionality to our two methods that we have uh, created. Now, since this is a straight road, again, we are going to have two markers, but we are not going to be sure which one is the outgoing and which, has, uh, which one is incoming uh, if we do not know the rotation of our road prefab or the direction of movement. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now you can see that this is the default rotation. I'm going to press F to focus uh, on it in the scene view. And we have our two markers. And now uh, the rotation in the inspector is zero. Let me rotate it by 90 degrees. Now we can see if we choose the rotation tool, it is rotating uh, to the right. So our top uh, car marker, so the red marker is going to be on the right lane. Now if we rotate it in, uh, to be uh, about 180 degrees, now you can see that this is exactly opposite to what we had in uh, with the rotation zero. So you can see rotation zero, the, the point has swapped and 180, uh, again, the point have swapped. So we will need to adjust our logic to find out the rotation and the direction of movement. And I believe that we are going to name those points as uh, we're going to create two fields, name them right lane and left lane, and this will be in reference to the 90 degrees rotation and then we are going to find out what is the rotation of our road prefab what is the direction from the road prefab to the next road or from the previous road po uh, the path to the to this position and we are going to this in this way find out which marker is the correct marker to return okay and i'm going to create a serialized field i'm going to create private marker and those will be the left lane marker and uh, we can add 90 to signify that this is with a rotation 90 degrees and we can call it right lane marker 90 and we are going to assign them with the rotation of 90 degrees in mind now to override the functionality of the classes uh, of the methods in the road helper all we need to do is type override a spacebar and we should have the list of classes that we can override we will want to override the get position for car to spawn and below override and let's select the car get car uh, position for car to end and those two classes uh, those two methods we want to override now let's start from the car to uh, get position for car to spawn we will need to find two things one is the rotation of our uh, road so to do that simply type int angle equals and we are going to call transform dot rotation dot euler angles dot y now this is a fluid value so all we need to do is upcast it so put in parentheses int 
uh, in front of this statement and we have upcasted it to be int value so it will return as 0, 90, 180 and 270 and 360 obviously. Okay, so now what we can do is calculate the direction. So var direction and we want to access the direction from the, uh, if this is a spawn point, so from this point to the next point. So the next path position we have uh, in as the argument for this method. So let's set it to be equal to next path position minus transform dot position. And this way we are going to find the direction from our current prefab, so uh, from our spawn prefab towards our next position on our path. So we have our angle and the direction. All we need to do is call return. And we are going to create a get correct marker method. And we are going to pass here angle and we are going to pass here direction. Okay. Alt enter on this method since we do not have it and generate this method. And let's cut it out and let's paste it below the get position for car to end. Now, since we will want to uh, set uh, to now since we will want to compare what is the direction we are going to create a uh, helper enum so public enum and let's call it direction and here we are going to create up down left and right and this will be our enum and let's slide it down and we are going to create a method called public that returns direction and we are going to call it get direction and all we need to do is get a vector 3 direction that we will pass in those methods the get uh, spawn position and get end position and we are going to convert any direction that we have into an enum up down left or right to do this we are going to simply type if our math f dot absolute value of direction that is given to us dot z is greater than 0.5f we will know that we have either up direction or down direction so if our direction dot z is greater than 0.5f we are going to get uh, to return our direction dot up else we will know that we want to return uh, the direction dot down and this will work because we are using the grid structure to place our road prefabs so prefab can be placed either above below to the right or to the left uh, so this is why we can rely on this 0.5 check if the z value is greater than 0.5 then we are certain that the direction is uh, up or down and else uh, we know that we have x value different because the direction can be as i have said in the cardinal direction so if our direction dot x value is greater than dot point five f we will know that we are talking about the right direction so return the direction dot right else we know that we are talking about the left direction so return direction dot left and this is just a helper method so that we do not need to create those comparisons in our uh, get correct marker function rather we can simply get the direction from this method and compare it to the enum so it is more clear what this get correct marker does so let's go to our get correct marker method and here what we will want to do is first check if our angle is zero as i have shown you that uh, there will be the different layout of our markers so that we will need to check for if angle is zero else if angle is 90 degrees else if our angle is 270 degrees and else statement if this is 360 degrees let's take a look at the unity okay so here is our root straight prefab with the rotation equal to zero so now we can uh, say that if we are traveling to the right, we want to get the green marker. Uh, if we are traveling in the, the left direction, we want to get the right marker to start. And if we are returning, so if we want to, uh, it to be the end 
position for our path, if we are going from the left direction, we will want to access the green marker. If we are coming from the right direction, we will want to access the red marker and set it to be the end position. So this is how we are going to find it out. And as I have previously said, we are going to pass those uh, with the rotation 90 degrees in mind. So the red marker will be on the right lane and the green marker will be on the left lane. Okay, let's go back to the code. Great. If angle is equal to zero, all we need to do is check if our direction is equal to, and since the direction is the parameter here, so let's uh, call it maybe direction vector. And let's create a new variable here, var direction equals get direction, and we are going to pass here direction vector. And this should return to us the up, right, left, or down. So if the direction is equal to direction enum dot left, we know that we want to return the right lane marker. So let me show you this in Unity. Okay, so if 90 degrees is the default layout, so the right marker is the red one. So if we set it to be zero, if we are rotate, if the red one is the right marker and we are traveling to the left, we want to return this. Else, if we are traveling to the right, we want to rotate, uh, return the green marker, which at 90 degrees would be called the left marker. So this is why we are returning those markers. Let's go back to code. Okay, so we have returned the right marker. Else, we are returning the left marker 90. Now, this might be counterintuitive, but since for each case we are going to return different markers, uh, it is unavailable, and I had no better uh, idea to name those. That's why I have named them right lane marker 90. Okay, if rotation is 90 degrees, we can only travel, so uh, the direction can only be direction dot up or direction dot down. So let's create else. And if the direction is up, we are going to return the right lane marker 90. So this is the default rotation. And else we are going to return the left lane marker. Okay. Now 270 will be the same situation as with zero. So let's copy the same if statement from angle equals zero to angle equals 270. But instead, if the direction is left, we are going to return the left lane marker. If the direction is right, we are going to retain the right lane marker. And for the else statement, so for 360 degrees rotation, this will be the same as for the 90 degrees rotation. So let's copy the if statement from angle equals 90 degrees, paste it in else statement. And again, we are going to swap those. So if direction is up, we are going to return the left lane marker. And if direction is else, so down, we are going to return the right lane marker. Great, let's save it. And this will be it. So now what we have to do is to assign those two markers. So let's go back to Unity. Great. Let's delete the straight street from the uh, scene. Let's open the prefab from the prefabs folder from the root folder, the street straight. And what we will need to do, select the street straight. You can lock it in the inspector using this lock icon. And let's add to it a component called road helper straight. And we are going to uh, delete the root helper. So click those three dots in the near the root helper and select the remove component. So now we will need to reassign the pedestrian markers. So let's uh, assign those two markers. That's why we have locked the inspector. We need to reassign the car markers. Okay, this is not a corner. It doesn't have crosswalks. Now we are seeing the incoming and outgoing marker just because we are extending the root helper class. That's why I said this isn't the perfect architecture for this system. But in any case, we want to assign the left and right lane markers. So let's rotate our prefab by 90 degrees on Y axis. And we are going to select the red marker. Select the move tool to see if this is the correct one in the scene view. The marker without an index is the red one. So let's assign it as the right lane. And a marker with index one is on the left lane. So let's assign it as well. And this will be it. So now if we save it, go back, uh, unlock the inspector and go back to our scene. And I believe that we didn't finish writing the 
uh, script for the end position. So let's reopen the root helper straight. Click those three dots and edit the script. Okay. And we need to implement this get position for car to end. So all we will need to do is copy the same code from the get position for car to spawn. Let's paste it into a get position for car to end. But we are going to swap the direction. We are going to find the direction from the transform dot position minus the previous uh, path position and we are going to be able to reuse the same code for get correct marker since the direction now will be different so let's save it let's go to unity and now if we press play we should be able to place a road place a house near the straight road prefab and special near the straight road prefab spawn a car and you can see that the car is traveling from the correct point here to the correct point here since those were correctly selected great so it seems like this logic is working what is left is to make sure that we can add one for the straight uh, for the curve and for the three-way and that's what we are going to tackle in the next video see you there